So as promised, here's my video about foot care. I'm gonna go through some of the products I use. I'm also gonna show you some of the things I do to keep my feet in really good condition while I'm running. And towards the end of the video, I'm also gonna show you how you tape your feet for MDS and other desert races. So if you don't like feet, then I suggest switching channels. <laughs> Hi everyone, how are we doing? Welcome back to the channel. I'm gonna talk about foot care today. Um, it's been asked by quite a few people. I apologize to them who I haven't done it. I know MDS is coming up in a few weeks, but you've got plenty of time to get yourself sorted out. So hopefully this helps you. But also if you're just a trail runner or a runner in general, and you wanna know how someone like me who runs sort of 50 to 60 miles a week keeps their feet in relatively good shape, then probably worth watching this and sticking around. The problem I have with my feet is they are pretty disgusting because um, I do a couple of hundred miles a year um, and they do really smash them up. So yeah, my feet aren't in great condition at the moment, but definitely towards when I get closer to races, I do start to take care. So anyway, stick around, here's a few tips. And the first one I'm gonna give you is, yeah, so my first thing I do is keep my toenails nice and short. It's really, really important. I use a nice little pair of clippers like that, you know, get, get right in there. I do that a week before a race. Um, I generally keep my nails short all the time, but a week before the race, I do pay attention to my nails, cut them nice and short. I don't do it the day before, the night before, just in case you catch a bit of skin or you cut them too short and they're tender. My nails go grow quite quickly. Um, so I think a week's enough for me. You might even leave it two weeks, depending on how quickly your nails grow, but definitely keep those nails nice and short. So another thing I do is keep my feet nice and moisturized. If you're doing a lot of training and you're doing your training plan correctly, your feet should get hardened naturally, right? You, if you're not doing enough running and you're just you know, flaking out and just doing a few miles a week, your feet aren't gonna get nice and hard. You're gonna get calluses, you're gonna get cracked heels, you're gonna get, you are gonna get blisters and you're gonna go through that process of getting blisters. So, you know, underneath my foot, if I haven't been running for say three or four uh, months when I was injured, right under my foot, I get a nasty blister. After it pops, it goes through that process and then you get some harder skin there. So you have to go through that process. It's not a bad thing to get the odd blister here and there. However, I do like to moisturize and you do need supple, you know, soft skin feet. I know it sounds bizarre, but days have gone by where you put white spirit, you know, and harden up your feet before a race. Forget all that. You want nice, soft, supple feet. So I use a couple of moisturizers. This one here is really good. Um, it's Epiderm. It's pretty low cost. I really recommend it. It doesn't smell that great, but it's an excellent moisturizer. It's, it's got no perfume in it and it's really straightforward. And we use that for everything, for the kids, for dry hands. And when it goes on, you really know you're moisturizing. So that is excellent, okay? This is another product I use, which I used quite a bit. It's nice. It's got like a fresh minty uh, smell. Um, it's probably got some antibacterial stuff going on in there. It's got a rosemary, pine, lavender. It's really good from a company called Gewol, or Gaywol, not sure how you say it, but that's excellent. And I put that on occasion. It does have a really pungent smell. So uh, yeah, be warned. What I do though is in the old days, old ladies, I think, oh, old ladies, young ladies, doesn't really matter. They used to put um, hand cream on and then put gloves on. So I basically have done that with my feet. So I'll put uh, socks on. So I moisturize, put a bit of that on and then put a pair of socks over my feet and then go to bed. It also stops the moisturizer from rubbing off on your sheets and duvet. So yeah, keep your feet nice and moisturized. I'm not an angel, I'm not a saint at doing this, don't get me wrong, I don't do it every night, but definitely before, um, six weeks before a really important race, I'll start to get my feet nice and moisturized and get that feet admin going. So also with my foot care, it's really important to massage your feet. It's something which you can do yourself. If you're lucky enough to have someone to give you a foot massage, well done, um, but I certainly don't, yeah? So I do my own feet. I don't think anyone would want to get near my feet anyway. My feet basically get a massage when I do use the moisturizer, get really in there with your thumbs, give them a good massage, they'll appreciate it, spread those toes out, and just, yeah, give your feet a bit of love. I also use a foam roller, so I put a foam roller on the floor, I stand on it, and then just carefully roll. Um, my feet, my arches, that's quite a nice low kind of impact roll and it just 
just, I guess it stretches out. I don't know if it stretches the plantar fascia, but it just basically gets rid of those knots nice and easy. And then just to make it a bit more vicious, a bit more hard, I get a ball out of the freezer and I put that on the floor and I'll just roll my foot on that and find those hard points and lean on that, lean on that tough point that where it hurts the most, count to 10 and then just release off it. And that will take the blood, takes the blood away and then puts the blood back in. Really, really important. I think that is definitely one reason why I very rarely get plantar fascia and problems with my feet. Get your feet nice and massaged and love your feet. So another thing I do is strengthen my feet. Um, I do that quite a bit. If I've got a spare moment, if I'm reading a story to the kids, if I'm cleaning my teeth, all that sort of stuff, you know, everyone says, pick those moments and just have a little strengthen session. One thing I do do, which is really good, is I put my foot on a towel and I grab that towel with your toes. You know, you, you put the towel underneath and you just pull your toes and try and move that towel. It really helps, just strengthen your feet. When I do Pilates, I get cramp in my right foot a lot and that's just because it's quite weak. Um, other things I do is I might try and stretch them a little bit, you know, and just muck about, do a, um, yeah, just get your foot on the ground and just give it a good old stretch. If you're doing calf raises, things like that, and going on your tiptoes and coming back down nice and slowly, you're strengthening your feet all the time. It's just important to try and get that, yeah, get that strength in your feet because your feet are the most important thing after a long race or during a long race, you'll be very surprised what can happen and the feet can be a showstopper. So yeah, definitely strengthen those feet. The other thing I do, which you probably know if you watch some of my videos, is I dip my feet in Dettol, I disinfect them. Really, really important after a race. Your feet have been sweating in a trainer, in a shoe. You might have problems with your nails. You may have got a black toe. You may have got a blister underneath your nail or any blisters. It does hurt if you've got cut skin, but get them in disinfectant. I always rave on about Dettol. It's you know an old sort of uh, remedy really like it, dip your feet in that, get them nice and disinfected. But also the other thing is use Epsom salts. If you've got tired feet and you just want to relax your feet, get some magnesium into that part of the body. I mean, obviously had a bath is the best thing, get in the bath and submerse yourself and your legs. But if you don't have the time, just, you know, you want to watch a bit of TV, get a bowl, put some Epsom salts in and rest those lovely feet. I'm going to talk about taping my feet in a minute. I'm just going to share one thing is I use, um, I do rave on about this a bit. Squirrel's nut butter is excellent. And I've used to use a different product, which is this here, which is a Gewell product, which is again, brilliant. Um, it's like a zinc oxide paste. And I use that for MDS. It's quite strong and it seems to stay on your feet for quite a while. It's really good. I didn't use this at MDS, but I probably would do now I found it. Um, Squirrel's nut butter is excellent. And I put that on my feet before I do a long run, anything over sort of three hours. I'll, I'll put anti-chafe on, but I, I'll literally put it all over my feet and I will not have a nice um, sort of, yeah, just a bit of less friction on your socks and things like that. It's also waterproofs them a little bit as well. And I will reapply if I'm not too tired. If I do a long race, I tried to do it when I did the arc, but try and reapply during a hundred mile or a 50 mile if you can, if you've got the time. And just, you know, if you're getting a hot spot, have that in your bag, put a bit of squirrel's nut butter on. It's brilliant. Right, let's look at taping your feet. So I'm really thinking about MDS, Marathon de Sable, or a desert race, really. Um, the reason why you tape your feet and the tape stays on uh, is because you wear a pair of gaiters. Um, these are the gaiters. They'll keep all the sand out, and you, you basically get your shoes. You get a Velcro um, it's glued and sewn around the base of the shoe, and these then stick onto them. You will not get sand in your shoes, okay? It just doesn't happen. Now, if you're worried about splitting these, it does happen. Um, these rubbed and I've got a little crack in them here. So I just used a bit of Hapla tape, a um, bit of sticky tape, and there we go. It's still on there from years ago. So that worked. So I just didn't get sand. So don't worry about that. If you get that done properly, you will not get sand. And that is the difference. If you're in the UK and you're doing a fell race or doing a 100 miler, there's loads of water, there's loads of grit getting in your feet. There's low vibration. Generally, the tape will come off um, unless you tape it really, really with thick stuff, which isn't advisable. However, so what we do use is a Hapler band. Where is it now? Here we are. So it's called Hapler band. Really, really important um, stuff. It's quite thin, um, but it basically molds around your toes and everything like that. You'll see in a minute on the video and it doesn't have any high spots for more of abrasive sort of uh, rubbing. You know, you don't want to create other areas for things to rub and cause um, blisters. So this is 2.5 thickness. Um, again, you can buy different thicknesses. This is 2.5, which I recommend. 
So it gets yourself a hapla band, you get two reels in it, so that's all good. Um, also, you'll need a pair of scissors to cut up your hapla band. And there we are, this is just a little pair of scissors I take with you, nice and small, um, but any scissors will do, depending on what you're doing. And you've got your scissors, you've got your benzoene tincture, this stuff here, okay? It's basically like a disinfectant, but also a glue. It's nice and sticky as such, and you spray it on, I decant it into there into one of these little spray bottles you can buy on the internet. And um, yeah, take that with you. But that's the stuff you need. You spray it on your toes, you'll see. And then once I've taped my feet, I'll then put um, some anti-chafe stuff all over my toes, not where I've taped them, but other places as well. And I'll use squirrels nut butter, okay? So those are all the products you need to tape your feet. Let's have a look at how you do it. Right then, let's show you how to tape some feet. Firstly, get your feet nice and clean, get all that grit and sand out of them and dirt, really, really important you have nice and clean feet. After the day, get your feet nice and clean. Next thing is you're gonna spray on the benzoin tincture, just a little puff of spray, not too much, and just what you wanna do is let that dry. We're just gonna take the two big toes and the little toe. Get that nice and dry before you apply the feet. Again, it dries really quickly. And now you're gonna measure up your tape, measure that over your big toe, and then round the other circumference of the other toe. And then you're gonna cut the tape into little semicircles, little domes, that stops it from peeling away. Um, really, really important to do that. You get prepared, make sure you prepare everything before you go out anyway, cut your tape before you go, and there you go. That is perfect. Now putting it on, it's quite tricky, but um, it's quite nice and thin, hence why we use Hapla tape. And you just roll it over the top like that, round to the back, just push it down, and then you're just gonna have a little snip to do, which is just at the top here, just cut that at the top, one snip on one side, snip on the other, and then you're gonna push those down, and that will stop any sort of high spots. And you'll see on the next toe what we do if there is one. And that's nicely done. And then we're gonna put a wrap around the other way on the toe. If you've got large toes, you can do two of these. Um, I think I did two on my second toe in. And then just wrap that round, nice. Push them down, check there's nothing too, nothing sticking out. That's perfect, look at that. There we go, one wrap big toe. I'm gonna to repeat the process on the um, second toe in. Just make sure, as I say, just cut these all up before you go. I had about 50 of them, um, and I knew exactly ones which were option. I marked each one as well, so I knew exactly what I was doing in the morning. I'm gonna do this every morning when you tape your feet. And then, and then as you see with this, you've got these little, see at the top there, you've got that one poking out, that bit of tape. So what you're going to do is going to cut that, just remove that because that could cause and rub on the other toe. And there we go. Nice. Look at that. Right, little toe. A little bit more tricky because you can't really wrap around the other way. So what you do is you just wrap it over the top and you're going to use the rest of the tape to go down the sides. And you're going to have these little high spots. A little bit more tricky to do this, but it's definitely essential you do it. Um, as you know, if you've seen any of my other my videos, I did have no problems with my feet at all. Um, so it's really important you do this. You just snip away, just fold them round. As I say, a little bit more tricky. But you can see, once you get it, cut all the bits off. And there we go, and there's your little toe done. Absolutely perfect. Right, then I apply um, anti-chafe. Um, I use squirrels nut butter, really, really good. And there's loads of other stuff, other ones you can use, but that's quite good because it's um, it's got um, stops you from you know moisture getting in as well, but it stops you from getting blisters. I do it all around, just on the toes. I don't put it on the tape though, obviously. Get your feet nice and in between your toes as well. Get your feet nice and um, covered in that. And that's perfect. That. And then finally, apply my socks. So I use in gingy socks. They're, I think they're brilliant. Um, you do get blisters with them, um, but not when if you do this, that's for sure. Um, but you just put them on. It just puts an individual compartment for each toe. So as you can see, it's nice. And, yeah, and you know that tape's not going to rub or anything like that. And there you go. Perfectly taped feet. Repeat on the other side. Anyway, that's it. Um, finally got round to doing it. So apologies. I know MDS is coming up very soon. Um, but at least that's video going forward for people who've asked. Hopefully that's helped. If you want any other questions answered, just please leave in the comments below. 
love you to subscribe, it really helps my channel. Um, I basically, 70% of you watching don't subscribe and 30% do, so thank you to the 30%. I'd love the 70% of you to subscribe. It just grows my channel and um, yeah, gets the word out because hopefully these videos are worth watching. Anyway, as I say, subscribe, leave your comments, hit that like button and I'll see you in the next video.